Well, hi again. This is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and today I'm here with Matt, our company mascot, as well as Jason Stray, a SQL Server MVP and a database architect here at Pragmatic Works. Uh, today we're going to talk about database. Sorry, some of the top mistakes that uh, database administrators make uh, or developers make with performance tuning. Right. Uh, some of the things that they could have done up front, perhaps, or done after the fact that they just yeah. you know, things they don't do. So um, uh, this is a debate that a lot of developers have all the time, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and when you talk about the top five, it's top five based on you know experiences. But these are based on things I've seen out at different clients. Right. All the time, and they're 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 fairly common. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and this is uh, there's of course more than five, but these oh, are the, yeah. these are the big the big uh, five. So let's get the whiteboard and kind of talk about some of those big ones that that we see out there. Oh yeah. All right, so Jason, uh, Mac has just gone through and he's he released his database to production. Yep. Unfortunately, a week later he started getting calls, or I started getting calls, because, uh, well, first of all, I started getting calls, I let a dog inside a database. Right. But we started getting calls because the, the performance wasn't very well. So what are some, some, some good tips that Mac can do to really get beyond the basics and into better performing databases? Okay. Um, there's, there's, there's a few that we can, we can hit, and they happen to be on the board. Uh -huh. um, uh, the first one, and this is the one I see like almost all the time, is is insufficient or poor bad indexing. Ah, I do see some all the time also. Yeah. Well, in Max's case, he said he had indexes. Right. He, every table had a clustered index, he said. Yep. Uh, and, on the primary key. Yep. And he didn't have any other indexes. No. And no. he had the wrong clustered indexes and, you know, the wrong you, you, you know, you can have clustered indexes, but you might not have the right columns. There's lots of ways to pick the right ones. Uh, I would say probably it's a most... Most developers mm -hmm. in the hand you database have a clustered index in the primary key yep. and consider that, and that may be fine, it's better than having nothing, right. but in most cases that may not be what the best clustered index might be in that database, right? Maybe. No, not at all. I mean, especially if you have things like um, orders with order details. Um, that order header um, uh, primary key down in the detail records, that's going to be what you want to cluster on because how many times are you going to pick out, oh, this line item from an order? No, no. You're going to be pulling up orders at a time. Right, right. And keeping them all together. Or if you're sorting by dates constantly, maybe yeah. the date's the best one. Yeah. Oh, so absolutely. It, it all depends on the data, but, but, but rarely is it going to be the clustered index on the primary key. Yeah. Uh, and in lieu of anything else, that's probably the best option, for, right. for me at least. Yep. Uh, cool. Anything else on indexing? Uh, the only other thing is that um, people just forget to index things. You, know, you get the clustered index in there, and then you don't do anything else. You know, there's lots more to do. There's non-clustered indexes. Right. There's full text search that you know, if you don't, if you're doing all wild card, card searches of your data, you should be looking at full text search as at least a candidate. Oh, that's a great option, also. Yeah. And the cool thing about the indexing, one last thing about that yeah. is, is there's tons of DMVs, dynamic management views, that you can use to kind of give you some recommendations, some level recommendations on Absolutely. on what type of indexes are being are being used and which ones, more importantly, sometimes are right. not being used. Yeah, so uh, so should they create an index on every column then? Just create Oh, a... absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, every time you create an index, it has to be updated every time you update that data. So think about, I guess a good way of looking at that is, is if you're inserting a new customer into the phone book, yep. every time you insert that customer, you got to also insert the index in the back as well, right? So you're really causing almost, almost two inserts in a way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and then anytime you change the name of the customer or move things around, change the phone number, you know, all of those things have to be managed and maintained. So you, you want to have as much indexes as you need. Okay. The trouble is, is most people don't check to see how many they need. And there's plenty of DMVs out there that I'll tell you all. I like that you had the number one. So yeah. to me, that's the biggest thing. Uh, too many developers if you just release it in production. Oh, yeah. Uh, disk performance. What do you mean by that? Um, disk performance is the underlying disk that's there. Okay. Know, making sure that you have the right disk. Because if, if you don't have the throughput, you don't have the IOPS that you need, you're going to run into problems no matter how good your design is. Okay. I mean, this is basically like having a sports car with no gas in it. I mean, great. You're not going to win the race. <laughs> so what do you recommend people do here? What's the conversation they should have with their sand guy or, or their storage guy? Um, the main conversation is to you know figure out the IFs that you need, um, add on to that capacity to figure out what you're going to need going into the future, and then look at what your throughput is. If you're doing large documents into your database all the time, uh, you know, 10 megabyte throughput, not big enough. Right, so should they so should they should look at it, or how, how, how can they benchmark that, you think? Uh, you dig into the performance counters. Uh, okay. A lot of people like to just ignore them these days, uh, but you need to look at the performance counters, pull them out, look to see what you're actually doing, and track them over time. And this is going to tell you exactly what you need. And, you know, at the, at the beginning of the year, yeah, 25% on, if that makes sense. And 
that's what you need for the going future. And, and storage guys like it when you talk in those terms because they can work with that. Ah, so this is like a paid weight, so it's kind of activity yeah. and storage. It's like just one, or, one of the many ones counter yep. that you'll look at as a consultant. You oh, absolutely. Uh, CPU, tell me about that. CPU is, uh, it's basically when, when, you know, you have enough CPU for the workload that you're having um, and looking at the schedulers, making sure that you don't have it all backed up. Um, typically, when you've got your workers queued up, you should have maybe like, at, you know, when it's busy, like five, six threads that are waiting out there. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen some systems where I go in there and they're like, yeah, we're having some performance problems and they've got 30, 40 threads waiting. Right, to right. Um, if, if you don't have the right amount of CPU or you have the wrong type of CPU or you've turned on the, um, or left on all of the, the green technologies on your CPUs and they're clocked down, um, you got to look for these, these kind of things and make sure that they're not happening. So it's not just about CPU utilization. I can't just open up Task Manager and say, okay, I'm at my 20% utilization on Vine. Right. This is more about looking even deeper into it and saying, uh oh, right. uh, the, the packet weights are too long now. Yep. Crazy. And, and it's, and it's kind of looking at, because um, 20% CPU may mean that the five CPUs that you have are 100% packed out. Uh, you have to look at the. You have to look at what you you've got allocated, especially when you're doing virtualization. And that also goes back to disperformance as well. Yes, uh, virtualization will hit you on on disperformance unless you really tune this bad boy, right? Yep. And you make sure that you've got things allocated out the right way. Gotcha. Uh, memory. This is a. This is SQL Server is incredibly incredibly reliant on memory. Right. Where CPU is cheap and memory is cheap. Disk is memory is cheap, but memory is is a cheap way to fix and band aid some things, right? Yes. Uh, there's a lot of times where you can just double triple the memory and you get you get double, triple the performance right back out. Um, making sure that you have enough. Skipping out of memory just never makes sense because you're talking about a four or $500 um, expense sometimes. Right, right. Compare, and then, and then you, you know, comparing that to a consultant that you have out there for a few thousand dollars in a week, and then, you know, adding in more memory is a, a good thing to do. It doesn't always fix everything all the way, you know, long term, but... You know, that's, that's where you get into bullet number five here. Uh, this is this is the blame the developer of what? It uh, is a little in bit. In a way. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is a little bit. It's, it's kind of, you know, if, if, you, if you're looking towards the future and you're like, oh, my application is someday going to need X, Y, Z, and you're not actually going to be using it, don't build it. Right, right. Um, and it's also looking at, you know, if you discover CTEs for the first time, and you're like, oh, I, I know how to do CTEs. You know what you're doing? Everything's CTEs. Right. Um, you know, looking at, at the CTs, I've seen people that, you know, they first learn about them, they're like, oh, these are great, and they do 30 of them in a row in the same query, and then they're like, they're so slow. Um, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. Or a whole bunch of views, right. uh, views, couple of views, couple of views. A lot, of, a lot of developers are trying to build OOP systems, object oriented programming systems with views. Oh, I'm sorry. And when as you layer the views on top of each other, after about a second level deep, it starts the query optimizer starts to go a little squirrely. Oh yeah, um, I had a client one time, long time ago. They got up to twenty six thousand records in the system, and it wasn't a very big database. It was about a fifty meg database, and it shut down the server. Fifty meg with an M. M. Wow. Tiny, wow. tiny application. All it did was uh, track tasks. But at twenty six thousand records, the server can handle it anymore. And this had like sixteen cores that was assigned to it. I think they had like eight gigs of memory. Um, you know, Holy cow! So yeah, it it was fine from a resource standpoint, but SQL Server would they had like six or seven nested deep levels on their views. So this is all about poor design. When you're developing the database, don't go for don't go for don't try to build the Yankee Stadium when you only have a minor league baseball right. team, basically. Yeah, and and one of the things I tend to tell people is, you know, if if you get done and you're like, I did a very clever design, you probably did the wrong design. Right, right. Just the, more clever it is, the more spaghetti code that probably got into it. Well, I think ultimately it comes down to having, if somebody were to look over your shoulder tomorrow mm -hmm. and it takes more than five minutes for you to explain why you did something, it's probably a little too complex also. Right. I mean, really, SQL Server is a pretty simplistic system, like Oracle or DB2 is, yep. right? So uh, it takes longer than that to explain something yeah. not right. Right. Is there anything else you want to mention, though? Um, no, this kind of covers it for today. Okay. Um, well, um, again, this is one of the things that, that Jason does regularly during assessments as, as a database architect. Yep. And if you have any questions about Jason or any of our other consultants, please go to pragmaticworks.com. And thank you for joining us today. And Jason, thanks for flying in from Minnesota to do this oh. also. Oh, you're welcome. Thank thanks. you.